Welcome back, everybody. This morning, I watched as my dog Benny tried to catch a beautiful little butterfly in his mouth. Unfortunately for him, he failed. Fortunately for me, though, I caught a little inspiration to create this cute little image of a dog and butterfly. Here's how I did it in Affinity Photo 2. I started with three pictures I found on pixabay.com. This cool little mushroom background, this little butterfly, and a super cute little dog. The whole project took me about half an hour as there were a lot of fine details to deal with. So I've sped things up a bit throughout the video. We'll begin with the puppy here. I'm going to use my selection brush tool to isolate his head and back from the rest of the photo. When I got a good selection, I used the refine button on the top toolbar to help select some of the finer hairs around his head and legs. All right, that looks pretty good. I'll select the output to a new layer and click Apply. Now, I'm going to clean up some of the residual pixels with my freehand selection tool, which is the little lasso on the left-hand toolbar. This guy's so cute, I may use him in other projects. So, I'm going to open up my Assets panel by going to Window and Assets. Then, I'll select my puppy and drag him into the Assets panel to use him later. Next up is the butterfly. I'll use the Selection Brush tool again to get a selection. This gets his wings really well. And I'll shrink my brush head down real small by clicking on the left square bracket a few times to get in his legs and antenna. I'll try the Refine tool, but I don't think it will do very good with the fine details here. So, I'll just select the output to a new layer and click Apply. Then, I'll use my pen tool to make a very fine selection of all the green areas. I'll just close Go around them and then click Selection in the top toolbar. Then, I'll delete them. I also use the Freehand Selection tool to do this job. It's a bit faster, but less precise. Okay, that looks really good. I'll drag him into the Assets panel too. I do this a lot with my cutouts, as you never know when you might need them again. All right, let's move on to the mushroom background. The first thing I'm gonna do is right-click on the layer and select Duplicate. You can click on Command or Control J as a shortcut. Then, I'm gonna go back to my Selection Brush tool and try to isolate the foreground of the image from the background. I'll start by making larger brush by clicking the right square bracket key a few times. Then I'll go over the finer details by clicking the left square bracket key a few times to make the brush head much smaller. If you zoom in a bit, it really helps. Once again, I've sped this up quite a bit as I'm doing a lot of fine detail work with the Selection Brush tool. I know you all have very busy lives, so I try to keep these tutorials short. Affinity has lots of great ways to speed up your workflow, but sometimes you just have to crank through the details to get what you want. If you get bored at any point, you can skip ahead to the next chapter. All right, that looks pretty good. I'll go to the menu and select Edit Copy and then Edit Paste to put the foreground into a separate layer. Then I'll use my freehand selection tool to clean up some of the details. Okay, now I'll turn the top background back on by clicking the little dot to the right of the layer. Then. I'll drag my fuzzy little puppy friend out of the asset panel and onto my canvas. I'll resize him, move him into place, and then grab 
and drop the puppy layer below the mushroom layer. I want the mushroom right between his eyes, so I'll move him to the left a bit. Okay, that looks good. Now, let's break loose that butterfly. I'll just click and hold to drag it out of the assets panel as well. Then, I'll move the layer to the top of the stack. And, I'll resize it and move it until it looks good to me. Let's put her right on top of the mushroom. All right, this is starting to look good. I want the pup's front right paw to be behind the, the mossy branch. So I'm going to extend the foreground to the left using the clone brush tool. I'll click on the tool and then select a spot where my cloning will begin by holding the Option or Alt key while clicking on the area you want to sample. Then I'll brush over the area I want to extend. I'll resample from a couple different spots to build this area up and make it look natural without being repetitive. If you accidentally clone something you don't want, just click Command or Control Z to undo it. Then resample and start brushing again. Alright now, I've noticed some areas on the edge of the puppy that don't look very good to me. I'll select the Erase Brush tool to blend them in or get rid of them altogether. I'll change my brush head to one of the basic soft round brushes and I'll lower the opacity and flow a bit so that I'm only taking away a little bit at a time. Okay, I think that looks better. Now, I want my dog and butterfly to be the center of attention here. So I'll select the crop tool and drag the right hand side in a bit until the puppy is just about centered. Now for the butterfly, I think I want her to stand out a bit more. So I'll go to the adjustment button at the bottom of the layers panel and select HSL adjustment. I'll drop the adjustment layer onto the butterfly layer and then I'll play with the sliders until I get nice purple look. There, that looks good. And now for the finishing touch, I want the butterfly to be reflected in the dog's eyes. So I'll select Edit Copy and then Edit Paste to get a duplicate butterfly layer. Let's shrink it down a bit by dragging the corner nodes and then place it in the dog's left eye. You can also duplicate the layer by holding the Command or Control key while dragging the image. I'll do that and place it in the puppy's right eye. Now, I want to blend these reflections in a bit. I'll click on the butterfly in the left eye and then go to the Blending Mode options in the Layers panel. I think Soft Light will work nicely. Let's do that for the right eye too. Well, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.